And here we go on our Thursday edition of the Orange and Brown Talk podcast, looking back today at the 2021 draft. And let's just get to it. We'll start with the first pick from that draft. It was Greg Newsom the second. Uh, Newsom was pretty good his rookie year. And I think he's probably one of the players in these last two drafts that we've talked about in these last two pods that, uh, at least for me, I'm really excited to kind of see what his season is going to look like in 2022. Uh, Mary Kay, we'll start with you. What is the next step now for, for Greg Newsom and his development? Well, I think it's a couple of things. He had a pretty good rookie year, uh, graded, graded out okay. Uh, he ended up, according to PFF, uh, becoming the 35th best cornerback in the NFL uh, amongst the qualifiers, only 105th in tackling, however. So he has to get, get better in his tackling. And then... Uh, I do think that, that Greg Newsom and all of the cornerbacks need to focus more on getting those takeaways, getting those interceptions. He didn't have any. Uh, Denzel Ward had three. So those guys need to do a better job of that. And then this year also with Greg Newsom, I think you're going to be looking at uh, probably at least as much inside work for him uh, as he had last year or maybe even a little more, uh, depending on what happens with Martin Emerson and how it all shakes out. The fact that he can play in the slot, uh, I think it will come in very handy for them, especially this year with Troy Hill gone. So I've got the grades up here, Scott. Uh, he was, uh, like Mary Kay said, kind of overall ranked a little lower. But among rookies last year, he was second in coverage at 70.6. But the thing she said at the end, I think, is, is what fascinates me the most. Like, there's a world where Greg Newsom is just the number two outside corner and him and Denzel just establish each other, establish themselves in those two roles. There's also a world where he spends a lot of his time inside where maybe he's not like, you know, the, the starting nickel guy. He's your, he's your number two corner. He'll be the corner that plays the second most snaps behind Denzel. But when teams go to 11, when they go, when they do spread out four wide, Newsom might be one of the guys that moves inside. I think that's a really fascinating subplot. Yeah, that could be the step that he has to take is just getting used to doing that more. Um, because, you know, when you look up and down the, the depth chart for the cornerbacks, there aren't a lot of guys who have slot experience. He's, he's kind of up there at the top of the list. And if, if that becomes his home, then it's interesting that like Greedy Williams and are they battling for the other spot? It's have depth and good to have some versatility, but he's really that only guy I think who you look at and say, yeah, he's, he can be doing that back and forth. They don't have MJ Stewart anymore. That's another thing they lost, you know, along with Troy Hill. So you really, you lost not only your starting slot guy, you lost the guy who played most of the, the slot as a backup. And in emergency situations last year, there were games where he was, you know, snap by snap, MJ Stewart's going back and forth between safety and slot. So uh, yeah, I think that's one of the things we're going to be looking for first, trying to, uh, during OTAs, trying to figure out who's who's getting most reps there and trying to, to see if there's any clues there about what we might see come training camp. Um, but yeah, I think he's he's your most likely option. Or maybe maybe we're going to see a lot of training going on during OTAs, you know, guys just taking reps, trying to deal with guys in the slot and because it's just a different animal. You don't have that sideline there to help you. It's, you know, the route could go either way and just, it's just a different, a different situation. Yeah, Ashley, in a lot of ways, you know, this defense we, we've talked about, I know, Scott, you like to use the, the phrase positionless football, um, and it feels like in some ways they want to go this way on defense. And, and with Newsom maybe having that ability to slide outside, go inside, what, whatever he can do, that sort of takes them a little closer to that. But also, it's not a bad thing if he's just your number two outside corner and him and Denzel just shut people down. Yeah, and I mean, to give people an idea, 517 snaps for him outside last year, according to PFF and 102 snaps in the slot. So I think like when we heard from Kevin Stefanski last week at rookie mini camp and we're asking him about this and he's like, Oh, I think we have multiple guys who can play that. Like, yes, some of that is him not wanting to reveal anything too soon and they need to get a look at these guys. But I think Greg Newsom has shown he can be effective in there. And, and on top of that, like kind of like what Mary Kay was saying, I think he has a lot of room to grow with getting those takeaways. That's something that he's talked about in wanting to create those interceptions and things like that. So I think it's all about them finding 
where he can be most effective maybe at doing some of those things to help this defense the most. And Mary Kay, just to kind of follow on that thread a little bit, as I'm looking at those splits on, on PFF, when you look at the last two weeks specifically, uh, 36 in the slot and 33 wide in week 17. And then week 18, when they played Cincinnati, it was 33 in the slot and eight out wide. And that was a weird week, obviously, for, for a lot of reasons um, and, and who Cincinnati was playing. But Cincinnati is a team that spreads it out a lot. Week 17 and 18, when you're out of the playoffs, probably I don't know how much stock you should put in it as far as what it tells you about the next season. But that is kind of an interesting split in the last two weeks. Yeah. And, you know, they may have been doing that with an eye to the future and trying to determine uh, what they were going to do with MJ Stewart, what they were going to do with Troy Hill moving forward. Um, I was a little surprised that they let MJ go because I just thought he was a, a good utility defensive back and somebody that you really could throw out there and have him be effective as that nickel back. But I think what this means is that um, everybody in the secondary is going to have to be able uh, to do a little bit of everything. And I think it represents maybe a little bit of a, a paradigm shift or a scheme shift in that, um, you know, we'll probably see some different things uh, with, with different guys in there. And I think everybody's going to have to be able to do it and we'll have opportunities to do so.